So um, in order to sort of get into this a little bit, I'm going to show you how you can use something called an expression tree. So let's look at this one here. And I would like you to turn to the person next to you and try to decide, is this a infix expression tree, a prefix expression tree, or a postfix expression tree? Okay, what do you think it is, uh, Mr. Basu? You think it's prefix, sir? Uh, what does everybody else think? What do you think, sir? It's all of them. So I want you to parse this tree using in order parsing, in order parsing. So let's just start over here. In order parsing. So I'm going to draw the little things here like this. So if we were to in order parse this tree, we come around here. What's the first one we would print? Three. 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 Then what would we print? Plus. And then four like that. Now let's parse it pre-order. See that? And let's do one more. Let's parse it post order. That. So you can see that the beauty of the binary tree is that it allows us to evaluate or list the expressions in any of the three just by changing the parsing order. So what I'm going to do now is ask you to take out a piece of paper. And I'm going to ask you to draw an expression tree for this slightly more complicated expression. And I'm going to give you a hint. The parentheses do not show up in the tree. There are no parentheses in the tree. I want you to see if you can figure out how to draw this tree. What do you have at the bottom most parts of the tree, sir? Um, I have the three and the four. Okay, and then what do these connect to? A plus. Okay, anything else around this level? No. Okay, so then what do you have over here, sir? Uh, that goes to the multiply symbol. Okay, multiply. And then what do you have, anything over here? Uh, the seven. The seven. Okay, and then what do you have above that, sir? Another plus. Okay, very good. And then what do you have over here? The divide. Okay. And then, and then a, what do you have here? A nine and a two. Okay, very good. So what I'd like you to do now is I would like you to parse this expression three different ways. See if you can come back to this equation for the in-order parsing, but then also generate for me the prefix and the postfix expression equivalents for this expression. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I put plus multiply plus three, four, seven, division, nine, three. Okay, so that is the prefix equivalent or parsing order for this tree. Let's do the postfix now. Mr. Mulcahy, sir, are you finished the postfix parsing? Yeah. Okay, sir, go ahead. Okay. So you can see that these expression trees are useful because they allow us to translate between infix, which is human friendly, and prefix and postfix, which are more computer friendly. Now, it turns out that these expression trees are useful for humans to use. If we were actually going to have an expression like this and we wanted to convert it to a prefix or postfix expression inside computer code, using a tree is not as useful because breaking this up into its tokens and generating the tree turns out to be fairly difficult to do. So I'm going to show you an algorithm either today or maybe the next time we meet that's more useful for code generation. But remember these expression trees because if you end up in college in either a math or a computer science course and they ask you to translate from one to the other, you can just draw the tree and just parse it differently. I'm going to show you also how to do this manually. 
to do this manually, we're going to put in, first of all, some extra parentheses to indicate the order of operations. So here, I'm going to insert some extra parentheses here, and then I'm going to insert an extra pair of parentheses here. So that's basically just to start off with. We agree that those red parentheses are implied, even though they're not explicitly written, yes? Okay. So we want to convert to prefix, and as is so often the case in math, we're going to start with our innermost parentheses, and we're going to convert it, and then we'll start working our way outward. So I'm going to convert this part first, because that's the innermost parentheses. So to convert from infix to prefix, I'm going to take the operator and I'm going to move it to the front. So this part is going to become like this. And now I'm going to take that and I'm going to take this operator here and move it to the front and move the 7 to the back. So it's going to be like this. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take the 3 and the 9 and I'm going to put the division sign in front here like this. And I've still got parentheses going on here, 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 and there. Mr. Sharper? Yes. Why did you put three in there? Oops. Sorry for that miss. That should be like that. No, sorry. I was just asking. No, I made a mistake. And now what we want to do is we want to take this expression and this expression and add them together. And once again, we're going to take the operator and move it to the front. So it's going to turn out to be like that. And finally, I think I mentioned to you that the prefix and postfix forms don't need parentheses. So all we have to do now is go and delete the parentheses. And you can see that we get the same sequence here, like that. Okay. I would like you now to work with a partner and try to figure out how to do this manually now for the postfix. It's extremely similar, extremely similar. I already have the parentheses there for you. Try to figure out how to go about it by moving the operators to the end of the sequences now instead of the beginning. Alejandro, sir, help me through this. What do I do first? Uh, so you uh, get the plus sign to the back. Okay, sir. And then uh, this, uh, put the seven and the location sign to the back. Okay. And then uh, get the nine and three and the division sign to the back. Okay. Okay, and then finally, we're going to delete the parentheses. And we should end up with this sequence here, over here. I want you to notice something, and this is an important insight for when I quiz you on this. There's an easy check to see. It won't show you if you got it completely correct, but you notice that the operands, the operands three, four, seven, nine, three, are in the same order in all three. Do you see that? So the operands do not swap order. Only the operators move around. The operands stay in the same relative positions. So three is always first, then four, seven, then nine, and three. So you can see they stay in the same positions.